Welcome back, everybody, to more CGL Season 13 coverage. My name is Bowsy. I'm joined here by Clock on the Cast, and it's time for more coverage of the North American Diamond Tier here, Clock, with two teams that are looking to try and gain some momentum ahead of the midseason tournament next week. Yeah, this is going to be exciting, and we get to see this match as both teams get ready to prep for the midseason tournament. A lot of interesting players on both sides, and hopefully this is going to be a very entertaining match to cast. Yeah, absolutely. Both of these teams, different records coming in as well. Mythos Griffins coming in with a 2-1 to one score line. We take a look at the rosters here that we're going to be shown here in this matchup. Starting off with the Mythos Griffins with a lot of strong players on either side. Leo Leopard, Bronze 76, DKK listed as a projectile DPS, playing tank here to start off the series. And then you have Mox and Grippa there on the support line trying to keep this team alive throughout the entirety of this match. Yeah, you said for DKK that they're primarily a DPS player, but playing the tank role today, going to be an interesting result to see how that goes see what kind of hero pool they have and just what they end up coming out on what they're comfortable with absolutely and as well alongside this roster you also have the roster for iup iupui cloud neon which we're going to be referring to as cloud not cloud neon because i do not want to do crochet on my tongue which you have jim gruel chaotic rubric and chrono on the side of that roster all of these players of course attending multiple universities most of which are freshmen and are on their first team environment here clock so there's going to be a lot to learn throughout the season but hopefully they're going to be able to work together as a team when it matters the most yeah being that most of these people are on their first teams it's going to be interesting to see how well they are actually joined together heading in to this match so that's going to be kind of interesting to look at it looks like they have a decent little mix of what they're comfortable with, but it looks like both of their DPS are more comfortable on projectile heroes. So it's going to be interesting to see how the hit scan factors into their lineup. 100%. So we'll have to see how the team is going to be able to do that as we are about to head in to our first map of the series. Of course, it is. It, of course, it is a predetermined map selection. Antarctic Peninsula, as such, will be the first map in our series. Then, following that, is going to be Blizzard World, Surabasa, and then, if we need to, we'll have tiebreaker maps on Esperanza and Route 66 for maps four and five. In the event we happen to go to those maps here, Clock. But it's going to be interesting to see how these two teams are going to approach either all these maps because they all offer very distinct styles from one another. That they definitely actually have different styles. Antarctic Peninsula is definitely more of a brawl favored map. You can pretty much run brawl rush for pretty much all three points if you really want to. So that's going to be an interesting one. But there is a possibility that we could see dive on. I'm not even 100% sure what that one point is called. 
it's is got it the, the one that's uh, closed in. Is it the one that's the labs, or is it the one that's the ship? It's it's the one with the big high ground, but I'm losing my mind on what it's called. I think so. It's been. I'm just tired today. Ignore me. Ignore <laughs> it's me. A, it's all right. It, it's all right. You know, I. You know, it's going to be interesting to see. Hopefully, you'll be able to chill out here as we enter Antarctic Peninsula for the first map of the series. And I mean, you mentioned dive clock. The Mythos Griffins are currently showing that dive composition on the le on the left, while Cloud Neon are currently showing the brawl. Yeah, this Lucio Mora dive from Mythos Griffins could be interesting. Mora is incredibly strong right now, as the doors are open and both teams head towards the point. Absolutely. As we head over here onto the labs, hopefully this is the one you were referring to, which is better for the dive composition. Mythos Griffins immediately trying to take that high ground for their own, while IUPI Cloud Neon trying to push in on this right side. You see Chaotic with this Ramatra just trying to find the ideal target to rush on top of. Also, that Winston of DKK might not have the best opportunity to get in, as there is a Reaper from the side of Cloud Neon, but nonetheless, the rush coming in. Here comes that Nemesis form from Chaotic trying to push forward, and Chrono is already brought out of the fight here so is gruel on the side of cloud neon they are and but meanwhile mythos griffins still finding these picks and now it's a team wipe for the side of Myth, mythos griffins and they're gonna be taking the point first very good job there by mythos griffins just playing patiently they realize they're not going to be able to dive into that core of cloud neon that reaper bat ramatra makes it very difficult for the winston but they did a great job of just playing patient and eventually bronze was able to come up with a pick off of that disruptor and they were able to snowball that so we'll have to see what the response what the response is going to be here from Cloud Neon as they are once again taking this right side trying to get to the high ground. Leo Leopard on this tracer, however, is looking for the back line. 82% of so that pulse bomb that can make a difference in the clutch scenarios. We'll see if Cloud Neon is able to engage fast enough. But right now, Mythos Griffin's keeping them at bay. Leo Leopard has this pulse bomb up, has to look for the perfect stick, but is forced to recall before they're able to do it. And the pulse bomb is a whiff. But still, Mythos Griffin's in control. Cloud Neon looking for the perfect target. But meanwhile, they've lost their Baptiste. Now the overclock is popped here by, by Bronze 76. And they're not bronze at all, shooting every single person out of line of sight. And it's going to be another cleanup here for the side of the Mythos Griffins and a second team kill already. That was a good, good fight again there from Mythos Griffin. They're doing a good job of being very patient here. But a lot of ults coming up on the side of Cloud Neon, particularly that window. That's going to force Mythos Griffin to have to back out of this poke phase as they finish getting up the uh, Primal Rage in order for DKK to be able to full commit. Once again, Cloudion willing to opt to take this right side route to get that high ground advantage, and they need to be fast as they only really have one fight here. They're going to initiate here with the window from Rubik, who's getting focused out from every single angle, but the coalescence from Ripa does cost them their life in the background. Jim is able to get the final kill onto the Moira, so now Mythos Griffins down one of her supports, but it doesn't matter when your DPS are still popping up in the kill feed. Bronze and Leo getting two kills of their own. Chaotic, however, is able to get an equalizing kill, getting rid of the tracer of Leo Leopard as, I, as Cloudion still trying to invest in this. And the Mythos Griffins now both down, down both of their DPS, and DKK is not long for this world either. Mythos Griffins, however, still going to stall at the point here and bring it to overtime. But the question is, how long can they hold it? Probably not long, considering Ripper's out of the fight. So is Mox, and the Cloud Neon team is going to be able to take the point for their own here, but 99% taken by the Griffins. Yeah, it's at 99%, and Cloud Neon had to use both support alts just to take that. But with three major alts on the board here, look to see what they end up doing with this. Annihilation, they're going to look to walk on the back line, so it's going to be very important to get out that Mora fade, but Reaper is already dead. Yeah, not a good start here from the side of the of Cloud Neon, losing Jim immediately, who had that Death Blossom up. Gruel's going to invest the Blizzard into this, trying to go into the back line of Mythos Griffins. It forces out the beat from Mox, as it's only DKK and Mox who are caught in the Blizzard. But meanwhile, the Griffins are cleaning up the field. Chaotic is hit with a Pulse Bomb on the way out. Jim is going to be coming in for one last recontestant, has this Death Blossom, as DKK is just going to hit them with the bubble and hit them with that long-range Lightning Bolt to completely eliminate them. And as the Overtime Wick burns to zero, it's Mythos those griffins taking the labs here as they take that round there's got to be an adjustment here from their from the side of cloud neon as they've got to do something to get bronze out of there bronze is consistently getting the first pick on that sojourn and if they don't manage to force bronze out it's going to be a very long series for them definitely will be as we head over now to the icebreaker and we're seeing one swap here 
from the side of Cloud Neon in terms of the composition. We don't know if they'll stick to this clock, but they're opting to go with the Junkrat here instead of the Reaper. And they're also switching Chrono over to the Brigida. And Gruul's now also going over to that Genji. So it seems like they want to go for more of an anti-dive defense. As I say that, Chrono's back over to the Lucio. But instead of the May Reaper, it's Genji Junkrat. An entirely different look here from Cloud Neon. The Genji Junkrat into that dive comp is going to be interesting because as Junkrat against all that mobility you're going to really struggle to land your nades and be able to farm any meaningful alt charge or do any meaningful damage i mean it matters here as they're able to get that first kill mox already taken out of the equation here as the mythos griffins forced to retreat a bit right now it is that junkrat trying to keep themselves alive but meanwhile ripa is taken out of the field here gruel's also able to get that kill into bronze 76 and while the mythos griffins are currently on this point and trying to cap it for their own with leo leopard being the only sole survivor there it's going to be cloud neon eventually taking that point for their own yeah they do take the first point first capture here not a lot of alt charge on the side of cloud neon but Mythos Griffin, they basically got wiped pretty quickly there, so they're basically about even on alt charge here, but Mythos is going to look to see if their Tracer can just farm that DPS passive and try to lower some of that healing. And already they're going to be lowering that healing in much more ways than usual as Rubric is taken out of the fight by Leo Leopard here. So now Mythos Griffin's in a very good advantage. Jim is not long for this world as they're hit by yet another railgun shot by Bronze 76. But there is a trade here. The tank go advantage goes to the advantage of Cloud Neon as Chaotic able to find two now in this fight. Make that three for Chaotic on this Ramatra trying to carry the fight in the favor here for the side of Cloud Neon. Leo Leopard looking for these final blows as Chaotic is not long for this world. Don't get killed out by Mox as now Cloud Neon falling one by one one but now rubric's back in the fight rules down but now this baptista rubric trying to keep the point alive they'll die to the hands of mox and cloud nine even though they are down in members they are stalling out this point and getting more percentage for their own but eventually it'll be flipping over to the side of the mythos griffins like you said it does eventually flip but cloud neon doing a great job there to be able to just stall it out getting an extra 20 percent there is actually big because it means like once they if they manage to flip the point back, that's one less fight that they're going to have to take just off of that extra percent. The Primal Rage and the Coalescence coming up here, though, for Mythos Griffin is going to be a nice little opportunity for them to engage onto this Ramatra comp. Chaotic's going to be initiating the first push. They use the, the Annihilation onto the Winston of DKK. Now looking for this backline and looking for Bronze 76. Meanwhile, Mox able to boop them away from the targets. And now you have lost Chrono here if you are Cloud Neon. Now you're down one of your supports. Make that both of your supports as the Coalescence from Ripa is able to eliminate the Baptiste. And this Overclock from Bronze 76 from a distance just pumping in more damage and securing Mythos Griffins another fight victory. They do a good job there of trying to go after Bronze 76, but Bronze ends up using that slide to just get away and start raining in damage and eventually finding that pick to be able to help take that fight for Mythos Griffins. Bronze doing a very good job, but that was a good job by the supports from Mythos Griffin to be able to keep him alive. Watch this blade coming up here from Gruul and see who he targets. They got to try to force that Moira fade early. We'll also see how these support ults are going to be used here for the side of Cloud Neon. As right now they have both of them online. Chrono's going to be using the B to engage here. As here comes the Junkrat using the red plays into the back line. But the tire is an absolute whiff. You hit a fading Moira. That's going to do absolutely zero damage. And now with those two ults being invested, Cloud Neon starting to lose members. Jim and Rubik out of the fight. Gruul has to determine if they're going to be using this blade. The answer is no. They're going to be saving it for the next fight. As now it's last fight territory here for the side of the Mythos Griffins to take this map. It's last fight territory and the desperation swap to the Bastion from Jim just to try to put a little more pressure into that Winston. But the beat here from Mox to be able to sustain for Mythos Griffin this coming fight against that blade now. Leo Leopard also looking on this off angle for that pulse bomb as the, the amplification makes sure used by Rubik, but they are cut to bits by Leo Leopard. The blade comes out here from Gruul, forces out that beat from Mox, but meanwhile, no kills are red in the kill feed. Gruul and Chrono sent back to their spawn room. Jim is not long for this world, and Chaotic is going to be shred brought to shreds as well as the Mythos Griffins clean up the point, and they'll be taking the first map in the series 100 to on 152, and they take Antarctic Peninsula. Very good series, or very good map for the side of Mythos Griffin. They were actually doing a good job of executing their plan. They clearly are comfortable on that comp that they're running, and they're going to look to take advantage of that. On the side of uh, Cloud Neon, it didn't look like they were super comfortable on that Ramatra comp, at least playing into that Winston dive. But, you know, they got to make those adjustments because these next two maps are big for them for that map differential.
100%. They have to try and get these maps in their favor. There were glimmers of hope there, but it definitely seemed like that the that Cloud Neon has to really work out their style here. We'll have to see if they're going to be able to do that on a map that allows for a much different style here. Of course, Blizzard World is the second map in the series. As we mentioned, it is a predetermined map order. And Blizzard World is not a map where you can really run the Brawl. It's, very, it's much harder to run the Brawl. You can still run it, but there is the opportunity for other compositions, such as the Pope composition. Yeah, I feel like there also is a possibility we could see some dive here on Blizzard World, which could go in the favor of Mythos Griffins. They seem to really like that Winston Lucio Moira comp, so there is a possibility we could see that here on Blizzard World. Um, on the side of Cloud Neon, it's going to be interesting to see what they come up with. Do they want to play more of a bunker style and try to play an anti-dive to be able to shut that down? But they got to come up with something here. Yeah, definitely. I do feel like, however, if you are on the side of Cloud Neon, you might not want to switch off of this composition as you're running. It depends on how, it depends on what you feel comfortable on. Right now, they say that their favorite brawl, their co favorite composition is the brawl, and they like running that ram style. So we'll have to see if they're willing to commit to that ram style here. If they're going to try to switch things up, because it definitely did not look clean there on that last map. Again, glimmers of hope, but not enough to create a beacon of light to get yourself into the victory here. If you are on the side of Cloud Neon, so hopefully they can get themselves cleaned up here. Mythos Griffins, however. It doesn't matter what composition they're playing here, Clock. They seem to be in the driver's seat, and they seem to be taking this all the way in their favor. So we'll see if it changes direction here as we head into Blizzard World for our second map. Again, Mythos Griff has already won up in the series. They're going to start here on the defense clock, and we don't have a lot to gauge here in terms of the hero picks to start off, but Bronze 76 is staying on that Sojourn, which I think is a very good move. It's definitely a good move for Bronze 76 to stay on that Sojourn. They seem to be incredibly comfortable on it. They were constantly getting some first picks on that Antarctic Peninsula. So, honestly, I like seeing them on the Sojourn, especially. But what's really interesting here to see is the Bat Zen with Winston. Okay, there it goes. They're switching yeah. to Sigma. I was going to be confused. Yeah, Bap Zen with a Bap Zen with a Winston is uh something that really should not work in a team environment, or it's not really ideal in a team environment. But nonetheless, DKK switching over to that Sigma now. Cloud Neon, however, Clock are running an entirely different composition. No Ramatra this time. They have Chaotic on the Arissa. Yeah, this is gonna be kind of interesting because we're gonna see Bronze seventy six look to farm up those rails on that Orissa before trying to take a shot at the back line. And it's going to be rough because you don't really have too much in the way of damage oh. mitigation as Jim is already dead. Yeah, damage mitigation is not in the agenda here for the side of Cloud Neon, and they kind of demonstrate it perfectly. They teleport up, and the second they teleport, they're basically all dead. Rubric will be the last to fall to the hands of Rippa, and already the Mythos Griffin still establishing their dominance here in this matchup. Yeah, that was kind of a rough TP spot there. Like, they TP'd directly into the core of all that damage, and of course, they're just going to be obliterated when they do that they made it pretty obvious and then because they were only on orissa as soon as orissa used spin coming out of the tp that was it there was no more damage mitigation so now cloudion setting up a different sort of style they have the reinhardt now for chaotic as they're trying to get the teleporter back up in that same position but you can't really teleport when the shield is there from dkk to eliminate it gruel however goes for a different approach now cloudion set up on the objective keeping mythos griffins off and they'll be getting their first tick here on the objective just keeping the griffins at bay chaotic however dropped extremely low and leopard lands an arrow into gruel's head getting rid of that symmetra so now cloudion trying to keep themselves sustained but jim is now out of the fight as well no dps left here for the side of cloud neon they were able to take two ticks but i think that's all they're going to be able to get here as they start falling by the wayside once again chaotic in the in the midst of the enemy team and they'll be falling in the hands of bronze 76 yeah they're gonna fall right there but getting two ticks is actually massive for them with two minutes still on the clock they only need one tick and now if you're mythos griffin you kind of have to play a little bit more towards the point because you cannot afford to let them tp onto the point and cap it for free so your positioning here is going to have to really change a little bit from how you're currently playing Mox and Rippa have changed up their position. Actually, they've gone all the way over to the opposing high ground as Cloud Neon are going to make the advantage onto the point. Uh, Amplification Matrix comes out for Mox, but it looks like it's more so for the side of Cloud Neon as the Dragon Strike and the Gravitic Flux are also invested here. Griffin's throwing everything into this fight, and so far they've found multiple picks. In fact, they've thrown every ultimate except the Transcendence into that and get the team kill as a result. They get the team kill, but they also deplete their alt economy here, only leaving the transcendence here. As we are going to see a switch up from Cloud Neon, they went to Winston May switches. What is this? What is this comp I'm looking at? What's going on? 
There must be some debate about the comp that they want to play. Gruel's going back over to Symmetra and Rubric over onto the Moira here. But, I mean, now you want to try to make this dive attempt if you are Cloud Neon. Interesting approach, considering you just got very close to being able to get it. But also, you can just do this. A Chaotic could just go up to the high ground, pressure out the Zen, and now all the ultimates from Mythos Griffins are offline, considering Ripa's out of the fight. And you're also chasing down this Baptista Mox, so now there's no support left here for the side of the Griffins. Gruel's going to sacrifice their life for it, but you still have an opportunity here for Cloud Neon to take this point back. They just have to clean up these final engages here on the side of the of the Mythos Griffins. It's going to be a loss here as Rubik does lose their life, but DKK is now gone. Bronze trying to bring this back it's not going to be for long though as chaotic is going to clean up the point for two and give cloud neon their first point of the map i like the way that cloud neon took that fight they immediately recognized that they needed to go after the zen who could poke them out with discord from the high ground but i'm a little confused why we didn't end up seeing the transcendence come out he did not attempt to save himself with it maybe he thought that the bat healing was going to be enough but when you have that symmetra there progging that dps passive to be able to deny some of that healing it's just didn't end up working, and Zen ended up getting overwhelmed. So now as the Cloud Neon team continue pushing that cart through the streets of Blizzard World, Mythos Griffins are going to be holding up on this high ground, trying to take all the space necessary. Leo Leopard shooting those Storm Arrows into the opposing side, trying to find any sort of lucky picks. Maybe might be able to roll a D20 once in a while, but still... Cloud Neon have to try and set their approach, and right now they're faced with a roadblock named DKK, and Bronze 76 is able to get rid of Gruul in the process. Chaotic also falls to Mox, and the Mythos Griffins are stopping that card at 61 meters for now. Man, that Discord with those Storm Arrows was brutal onto Chaotic. Just got chunked down almost immediately, and they immediately have to back out. And now Mythos Griffin, they're about to have five alts coming up. So we'll see if the Griffins are able to use these alts more appropriately. Last time they had this many alts on the field, they used all four of them at once and saved one for the next fight that they didn't even use. As Cloud Neon try to schedule their approach here, you can see them pushing onto the cart. Bronze 76 looking for the re-engage as the Transcendence is the first all popped here by Rippa. Now here comes that Gravitic Flux from DKK, landed right in the back line. Looks like they might have got to cancel that of it. As here comes the tire from Jim, trying to find anything. They find the kill onto Rippa. Meanwhile, the rest of their team is not looking better, not, is looking a little worse for wear. Gruul is currently trying to chase this Sojourn off of the high ground. Meanwhile, that cart is not moving as Cloud Neon is just diving into the back line. Oh and dying God. in the process. Oh my God, Bronze just does not want to die. Yeah, the point is still not being contested throughout all of this. Gruul's going to invest the, the photon barrier, dies for their efforts, and meanwhile, the car does not move to single meter. DKK's just been sitting on it, waiting for the next person to try and pass through this toll booth. Yeah, right now, they're going to have to back off, though. They've lost too many members. One minute left on the clock for Cloud Neon. They do have the Winston Primal here, so they can go... Very hard onto that Baptiste, see if they can try to force him out of position here. But with that window, they got to be careful. There's the ability to get a lot of extra damage as Beat is dropped too. Yeah, Beat and Primal both popped here by Cloud Neon. as DKK trying to hold on that point for their own. But meanwhile, Chaotic has found Broad 76. And the Hanzo of Leo Leopard is killed out by Jim. And now it's basically a team wipe. The only person live is Rippa, who's stuck in the arcade. They're going to be playing a lot of the game of death for quite a bit as they're killed out by Jim late in this fight. As now 30 seconds remain and Cloud Neon making their way through the streets of Blizzard World and near that final checkpoint, or that second checkpoint. We see the switch over to the Brig Diva here. It's going to look to be a little more contest on the Winston here, but they gotta be aware that that Symmetra can now charge off of the D.Va, so they gotta get Gruul out of the fight as the Dragon takes out one. Yeah, Leo Leopard's Dragon able to get rid of Rubik, and they're also able to get rid of Chaotic, and that is a team wipe within about, I don't know, six or seven seconds there for the side of Mythos Griffins, cleaning up the field with just two alts in hand, and they're gonna be stopping that cart right outside of the second point here on Blizzard World. If you're Cloud Neon here, though, that's not actually a bad try on their attack because they get almost to the end of second they know what their win condition is now they just got to go get it you know what you got to do just go get it so we'll see what the approach is going to be here from mythos griffins on the d on the attack here and what cloud neon are going to respond on the attack it does seem like clock that whatever compositions we're seeing from cloud neon it's not really a stable sort of normal composition minus the brawl composition we saw in labs it seems like they're playing hybrids of compositions like they're playing a hybrid of brawl and dive dive and poke anything of that nature and it's just not orthodox here and as we see on their defense I mean, this is more this is more orthodox. I would say the Bastion is the only thing that's not normal from the side of Cloud Neon. But nonetheless, this seems like a composition you could get away with in this sort of setting. 
Yeah, being this uh, Brig Zen with the Sig is kind of interesting here because it, it really can be run over. Brig right now is not exactly in the strongest state. And Zen, after his nerfs, he's still decent. A little bit weaker than he was at the beginning of Season 9 where he was just running rampant. But he's still able to be walked at now. And the Brig is not really going to provide the most amount of peel. So it's going to be interesting to see how they play this against this Lucio Moira Diva dive. Yeah, Mythos Griffiths were showing the Malga there, and I was sweating a little bit, having some flashbacks to 2023. Nonetheless, they decided to go over to this Diva composition, and we'll see how it's going to work, how they want to set up, how they want to get over onto the advantage for Cloud Neon. Maybe they'll realize that Chrono and Rubric are on this Zen Brigida. And you already see Leo Leopard going for that angle, but Chrono is able to kill Bronze 76 in the process. Leo Leopard contesting the point, does get the recall force out here as Cloud Neon rotate over to that objective to try and hold it for their own. Leopard's looking for a push in, but it's very hard to do that considering that you really do not have the pressure to be able to get in but jim is able to jim dies here at his hands of ripper who's found two in this fight on the moira not a hero that you'd associate with getting a lot of kills but nonetheless it's going to enable the griffins to push in and take this first objective cleanly like you said they push in took it cleanly and ripa already 70 percent to that coalescence this is going to be a very fast alt which gives them an opportunity to to either engage two fights from now or to use it mid fight to sustain Cloud Neon sticking with that Briggs end despite not being very close to the rally. I'm surprised they're not trying to make a switch to the Baptiste here. Go to a little bit more pokey and a little more sustain against that comp. Yeah, definitely is. It's going to be Cloud Neon trying to figure out where to set up. Chaotic realizes that DKK is currently trying to go through the arcade as a D.Va typically would, but they're able to get rid of their mech here and might be able to get the elimination on this baby D.Va. If they're able to hit those shots and hit those Gravitic Spears, they will be able to get the kill there. So now the Griffins are down their tank, and there's an opportunity here for Cloud Neon to push forward now that Bronze 76 is taken out of the equation as well. Yeah, that was just kind of a bad play there from DKK. They overextended. Their team wasn't with them. And they got kind of got caught out. But great job there from Cloud Dion to realize that the Diva was isolated. Turn around and get that kill. And that's going to force Mythos Griffin to burn some time as they have to reset. So now as the cart moves forward once again for the side of Mythos Griffins, and they're starting to pressure this high ground here for DKK and Mox up there. You can see Chaotic trying to stop them, but Leo Leopard lands a pulse bomb in the back, and this coalescence for Ripa is keeping the entire team alive. And yet again, it is another shred of the entirety of the Cloud Neon team. Chaotic will be the last to fall as it's a continued push here from the Griffins, pushing toward that golden box of victory. As they push towards the golden box, Chrono does have that transcendence to be able to fight with it. So look to see... If they pop the Transcendence here on the Engage, just to be able to fight on the cart with it. Yeah, they pop the Transcendence just so they can get Cloud Neon into the fight here to try and contest this cart before it hits that golden box. Meanwhile, Chrono is able to get to kill into Ripa as well, and Bronze 76 is out of the picture as Cloud Neon cleaning up these picks and stopping that cart from advancing into the golden box of victory and securing the map win for the Griffins, as they'll be able to get some sort of hold here. Yeah, they do finally get the hold here. Now the bad thing is, they are on Bap Zen with Winston. It's going to be a little bit of a struggle here for Chaotic as the only reliable heals that they're going to get on that Winston is going to be from the Zen Harmony Orb. And that's not going to be a lot against that high damage comp of Mythos Griffin. As you're going to see Mythos Griffin's taking this high ground once again. Chaotic looking for the push onto them as meanwhile DKK comes up from an angle and knocks Gruul off the high ground, meaning Chaotic is all alone on that high ground. Here comes the overclock from Bronze 76 and the Diva Bomb from DKK finds Chaotic as well. And Bronze 76 kills out Rubric. And meanwhile, the cart sails into that golden box of victory. And the Mythos Griffins are at match point here in the series. Match point up and a great play at the end there from DKK and Bronze 76. The overclock combined with the Diva Bomb. The pressure from the overclock there forcing the Winston basically into the line of sight of the Diva Bomb with nowhere to go. Fantastic play there. This this right here was a great play here at the end of the attack from... Um, I can't speak anymore. Cloud Knight. From Mythos Griffin. Cloud Knight. Was that, that Mythos Griffin? That was on the defense. Mythos Griffin's defense. So. I... I'm losing my mind. Um, <laughs> we, we were given some stats, actually, during that round. And it's kind of interesting to look at, like, the pure amount of damage that's coming out from the DPS of Mythos Griffins compared with the DPS uh, for Cloud9. And you can see it's a little bit of, you know, Mythos Griffin just having more pressure coming out right now. And Cloud9 doesn't seem to 
fully know what they want to do. Like, they're running these weird hybrid comps that, you know, you kind of really wouldn't expect. But for a lot of them, it is their first team. So they're not really used to how to play some of these comps in an organized environment. Yeah, definitely. So we'll have to see if Claudion is able to fix some stuff up here as they are given a five-minute halftime intermission. And we'll have to see if they're able to get themselves cleaned up and try to take some maps that they much that they desperately need if they want a chance at that mid-season tournament. So we'll be going to a quick halftime break. Don't go anywhere. You don't want to miss the rest of this series. <laughs> Thank you. 
Welcome back, everybody, from that quick break as we head into our next map of the series. Currently, Mythos Griffins are currently two maps up, while the Cloud Neon, unlike Neon Cat, are still looking for their rainbows to come in this matchup. Bowsy with Clock here as we head into map number three. It is Suravasa. So right now, this is an opportunity that Cloud Neon need to take advantage of as if they lose this map, they are done for this matchup and they are potentially barred out of that mid-season tournament next week. So pace has to be picked up here. Yeah, they need to treat these next couple maps as a playoff scenario. Right now, it is do or go home. So they kind of have to fix something. They've been running some of these weird hybrid comps that haven't really panned out for them. Hopefully, they took the five minutes during the halftime break to be able to figure out something and try to come up with an idea of something they can change in their play style to be able to make a dent in this Mythos Griffins play style. Yeah, definitely. And also, we've seen we've, the only comp we've really seen them that seemed to be more like normalized was a normal brawl composition, a Reaper May Ramatra composition. That it, it didn't work out as well as they probably expected to on Antarctic Peninsula. Still, though, that was the most normal composition. And if you were going to run any sort of composition on Suravasa, a brawl style composition like that is probably your best bet because Suravasa, not really known for that dive style. Definitely not known for the poke style. It is a rush map, and you have to be faster than your enemy team in order to take advantage in the crucial moments. So we'll see if they're able to get that stuff under their control. Mythos Griffins, meanwhile, we rarely have seen them on this rush style clock, so it's going to be a new look for them. Maybe we'll still see them on this dive style, or maybe we might see them switch things up here in this map because, again, only playing dive throughout the entirety of the series, it can only last you well for so long. I mean, they have been playing a sort of form of the di Dive Rush hybrid with that Winston Lucio Mora comp. I mean, even though it is a Dive tank, it does play more like a Rush comp, so we have somewhat seen them on a Rush. But, you know, it's more of a hybrid. But Mythos Griffin looks like they are very practiced on that Winston Lucio Mora comp, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see them run it throughout Saravasa. Absolutely. As we head into our third map of the series, if Mythos Griffins win this map, it is the last map of the series. So we'll see if Cloud Neon is able to get themselves a map in this victor in this series. And we'll have to see if they're able to make a difference here. One thing I am noticing, however, here, Clock, is that Cloud Neon have a swap coming in here. Solar is coming in on the support role over Rubric. Yeah, I think Solaris in or is actually kind of an interesting swap here it looks like they're going to be playing the moira so it looks like we are going to see a change in play style here for cloud neon maybe they're a little more comfortable on this moira pick with this sojourn Re sojourn reaper this is going to be more of a dive more of a brawl than a dive but on the other side we're seeing a kiriko ana for mythos griffin they're going away from that lucio moira yeah, definitely. Cloud Yonder running that sort of rush style that it was apparent in Overwatch 1 back when you had two tanks. I know a very foreign long time ago. Nonetheless, it was a time that existed. You basically would just rush in. Your Rein your Winston would play more like a Reinhardt, not be diving in, but more so just trying to engage the defenses. And that's exactly how Cloud Nine are gonna Cloud Neon are gonna play it, and they're gonna be able to get rid of Bronze 76. DKK equalizes with a kill onto Solaris, however, as now it is an even trade. Cloud Neon down one of his supports, but so is the Mythos Griffin since Ripa's now out of the fight here. You see the Mythos Griffins trying to take this point. Leo Leopard on the objective, but eventually they're going to have to retreat, and Cloud Neon are going to be taking this first cap. Yeah, this is definitely a good playstyle difference for Cloud Neon. They changed it up. They managed to get the first pick there. This Reaper is going to put a lot of pressure on that Winston from DKK, but they got to be aware of where Bronze 76 is at all times. If they farm up that rail, they are a threat to get a pick at any point. DKK dives into the point, forced to use that bubble really early, but Chrono is hit with the anti-nade in the background. DKK now dropping extremely low, has no help with the support, says all the Cloud Neon had to do was just rush on top of them, and now the pick's all red in the kill feed, and Cloud Neon looking like an entirely different team so far here on Saravasa. Yeah, they're looking a lot better here. I think the sub definitely made a huge change, as they're going to get bronze late, and that's going to buy them an extra 20% there. Absolutely. Meanwhile, Clock, as you look at the side of the Mythos Griffins, they're actually making wholesale swaps over to the mirror composition here at Cloud Neon are showing up, so they want to try to get their hand at this Winston Brawl composition as well. First time tonight that we're seeing the full mirror from both teams, but right now Cloud Neon, because they were already on it, they're way ahead on all charge, particularly with the supports. 
We'll see what Gruul and the rest of the Cloud Neon team is able to do as Gruul's just pushing in his back line, trying to eliminate Bronze 76. They will be able to get that final kill as well. So Mythos Griffins are relying on this Reaper to get the damage. But so are Cloud Neon as Jim is killed out here by DKK. Now the beat comes in here from Crota to stabilize the rest of the team, as does the Coalescence from Solaris, trying to burn down the members of Mythos Griffins. DKK pops the Primal Rage, the only ultimate that the Griffins had in this engage. Bronze is going to be coming back here with this Overclock, but Leo is out of the fight. And it looks like at the end of the day, Cloud Neon are going to be cleaning up the remains of the Griffins and taking the market for their own here on Saravasa. Oh, that's, uh, that's, that's a questionable one from Gruul. Yeah, that might be a little bit of a fat finger there from Gruul, but you know what? I think they were just excited. They took that round on Saravasa after getting 2-0 on control earlier, and they look much more confident after the support swap, and now they actually have a good comp in place. But DKK switching over to the Junker Queen try to counter that Winston a little bit more, but it's going to be a little easier for Cloud9 because they do have that potential for damage mitigation from that bubble if they're able to separate the supports and stop the Moira from being able to heal. Junker Queen is probably one of the most anti-dive tanks currently in the game. Definitely a very heavy counter for Winston. But remember, Cloud Neon are not really playing a dive style. They're playing this more like a brawl. Winston's just a Reinhardt in disguise. It doesn't matter, though, because Leo can just run your backline and get rid of Jim, who had the overclock online. Coalesce is invested here from Ripa as well, as the picks are starting to go blue in the kill feed. Mythos Griffins finding these crucial picks. Solaris, Gruul, and Chaotic all in the grave, as they just need to clean up this Lucio Chrono to take the objective first and start counting up the percentage on Gardens. DKK built 50% of the Rampage in that one fight. Bronze 76 has the Overclock coming into this next fight. But Solaris is going to have that Coalescence coming up. That's going to give them an opportunity to be able to engage. And expect to see them just look to walk at that back line. And just kind of ignore the Junker Queen here on the Coalescence. It's all going to be on Bronze 76 to try and eliminate this Moira before that Coalescence is engaged and before it starts causing a lot of trouble here. Mythos Griffin's trying to hold right on top of this point. They're waiting for the opportunity to push into the back line here. DKK using that Carnage to swing in front of Chaotic as here comes that Coalescence from Solaris. Bronze answers back with the Overclock looking for picks from afar. Is able to find Chrono and now all the picks are starting to go in favor of the Griffins once oh again. As it's going to be a cleanup for Bronze 76 hitting a shot onto Jim on the way out and now the Griffins basically is going to be able to solidify this. Maybe one more fight here for Cloud Neon to try and contest again. I'm not going to lie. That sliding jump shot there from Bronze. Oh, my God. That just caught me off guard. I didn't think that they had uh, the skills like that. Even as they've been impressing this whole series, they still managed to catch me off guard. The Rampage is up here for DKK. Look to see them engage with it. See if they can end this fight early. Here comes Jim with that overclock. The beat is initiated from Mox, and Bronze shuts down that overclock immediately with their own railgun shot. Chrono's going to answer back with the beat, but now that rampage from DKK landed onto multiple members. Gruul, Chaotic, and Chrono at least were caught by that, but now all the kills are starting to be cleaned up, but Chaotic finds two. Gruul's Death Blossom once again doesn't find anything, unfortunately, and they're going to be paying for that, however, as at the end of the day, the Mythos Griffins are just cleaning up these picks a little bit better, and they're going to be taking Garden in a full reversal from what we saw on market. Yeah, and we're going to start seeing some swaps coming out from Cloud Neon as Jim will switch over to the Cassidy. And now there's, once again, on kind of a hybrid. Now they don't really have that Sojourn there to be able to match Bronze. And this is going to be kind of interesting. The Cassidy is going to struggle because they're just going to get ran at by this Queen Moira comp. The Cassidy is going to be an interesting pick here. We'll see if Jim is able to make advantage of it as they are going to be taking the high ground here for the side of Cloud Neon. But Jim, you already see so much damage coming in. And Leo Leopard has this Death Blossom running straight into the enemy team, finding two. And all the cleanup is there as it is a full team wipe for the side of Mythos Griffins as they're going to be capping the palace first. Great job there from Mox and from Leo Leopard to speed in that Death Blossom to be able to wipe that away. And Jim has kind of given up on the Cassidy already and gone back to the Sojourn. Not a bad idea from them. Uh, both teams, Solaris is close to that Coalescence here, but with Ripa having it first, this is an advantage for Mythos Griffins to be able to engage that Queen with Cole. We'll see what the Griffins are able to respond in kind here with us. Here comes that Coalescence from from Ripa, and already Gruul is taken out of the fight here by Mox. Solaris answers back with their own Coalescence, but they're on the wrong side of history. Jim gets killed out by Carnage as well here, and the Griffins able to continue this pressure. Chaotic's Primal Rage doesn't amount to much. Leopard, however, is killed out by Chrono, so it's still potential here. Solaris is currently battling with Mox in the background. Mox is going to be able to get out and get to the rest of their team. Meanwhile, Chrono is out of the fight, so there's only one Lucio left in the field, as now 
all the fix still being blue in the kill feed. Gruul is able to get rid of Rippa, but it's not going to be for long here. It's going to be Cloud Neon getting out of his fight. And it looks like Griffins are in set territory to go to Flashpoint match point. Yeah, with the late picks there, uh, Neon is not going to get another chance to engage. They kind of just have to set up for this next point here. But this is going to be really bad for Cloud Neon. As Mythos Griffin, you look at their alt economy. They have not used the Rampage. They still had the beat. And Bronze 76, with that overclock, has proved they are very lethal. So they have to be aware of where Bronze 76 is at all times if you're Cloud Neon and mark them. Right now, it's going to be Mythos Griffins running into Cloud Neon before they even get to the point. The Rampage is used. It runs into a wall, but it still finds two. Chaotic and Solar is hit by it, and Chaotic is dead as a result. And now all the picks continue to be blue in the kill feed. Mox and Bronze 76 cleaning up the remainder of the field. The Moira 1v1 is interrupted by DKK as it's going to be Mythos Griffins capping the ruins first. Yeah, they're going to cap first here. DKK using that first ult just to be able to take this point. And now... Jim has switched over to the Junkrat. I don't know about this. I know it seems like Junkrat is kind of a comfort pick to them, but Junkrat it, with this comp is kind of rough. It's one less person to be able to help with that Winston engage and one more person that Mythos Griffin can easily run at. So now Cloud Neon going to be taking a different approach. They're just going to run straight to the point. Now that they have this Junkrat and Reaper 2 heroes that excel in close range DPS, they're just going to try to take the advantage in their own. The, the beat is going to be forced out here by Chrono as now the Griffins are trying to continue contesting this point. They do have that beat and that coalescence from both of their supports as Bronze is looking for anything. The Overclock doesn't find anything, however. And now Solaris has their own coalescence, keeping the entire team up and shredding the side of the Griffins to bits as Gruul is the only casualty here. But as I say that, Leo Leopard unleashes the Death Blossom, finds Chrono in the back line, but I don't think it's going to be for long as now they're only 12 health in the name. They're going to get killed out by the Skill Orb, and Mythos Griffin's forced to give up this point to Cloud Neon. Yeah, they're forced to give it up, but they're already at 60%, and with how fast these ticks go on Flashpoint, 60% can basically be only a two-fight territory, and Mythos doesn't have any alts to work with here, so right now Cloud Neon is at an advantage. They just got to not pop all of their alts. We'll see if that's the case, as right now Jim looking for the perfect tire placement. DKK runs right past them and is met with Rip Tire to the face. The Junker Queen has been dethroned. And Jim takes that first engage here, kill here. And the Griffins now, without their tank, they're forced to just poke from the sidelines and look for any sort of final blows to get into their favor. That's a good start. Jim now out of the picture. Leo able to get that first blow as they're the first one on the point trying to contest it. But now Mox is gone. So is Rippa. You have no supports here for the side of the Griffins. And Cloud Neon are starting to really wake up. Up, and the ruins are going to be theirs. Yeah, they're going to take this point here. Of course, we're going to go to point five. This is going to be winner take all for this map. And we're going to see right now, Cloud Neon, they still have three alts coming up. Mythos hasn't been able to finish building their alts, but they are close on that overclock and the coalescence here. But this first fight should be in the favor of Cloud Neon. As Cloud Neon are going to be able to get to the temple first, the final flashpoint on Suravasa here. It is win or go home for Cloud Neon on this flashpoint. We'll see if the Griffins are able to push in. Bronze 76 oh. already finding the kill on the gym before the fight even starts. But they're going to be booped off the map by Chrono. Beautiful boop there from the Lucio as Leo Leopard is also gone. Chaotic finding two in this fight. And the Coalescence from Solaris and the beat from Chrono are there to clean up the engage. As Cloud Neon are going to be taking that objective first. You know, it's kind of interesting that Cloud Neon, they got two picks right off the rip, one with the boop and, an and another kill, but they ended up having to commit both support alts into that fight, leaving them only with the Primal Rage and the Death Blossom here. But Mythos Griffin, they've been patient. They now have three alts coming up on the board here with the Rampage going to be very close along with the beat here. So Mythos should be favored. The Coloss is going to be engaged here by Rippa as Griffins try to push in, and Solaris already brought out of the equation here. The Griffins now have an opportunity to take this point back for their own. The Coloss is now expires, but still, the Cloud, Cloud Neon have control of this point. Chaotix Primal Rage is just booping everybody around, and Jim has this Rip Tire again. They once again find the kill on the DKK, and Leo Leopard is taken out of the fight. Cloud Neon continue to try and stall out these picks, but Gruul is now out of the picture. But Bronze is killed out as well with the Overclock in tow. The Mythos Griffins have used two ultimates, yet still they'll take the point and they're in last fight territory last fight territory here great job from cloud neon to turn it around the rampage beat and blossom coming up here so mythos griffin should have an advantage but mark is dead 
That Mox is down. Mythos Griffiths have nobody to touch the point either. And Cloud Neon are back in this series, taking their first map. And now they're back in. And we're now heading to a map number four here. Not as easy as it seemed for Mythos Griffiths to try and get an advantage here, Clock. They still have to work for that final map. Yes, they do, and actually, this kind of caught us by surprise. Mythos Griffin looked very strong in the first two maps. We were thinking that possibly they were going to take this map pretty easily, but a great job there from Cloud Neon. The support swap seems to be doing wonders for them, as now it's a lot closer than it was at the beginning of the series. Yeah, you have to think maybe there might be some comms changes that are going on now that Solaris is in the roster compared to Rubrik. But nonetheless, it, there has been a complete mental reset from the side of Cloud Neon. They got themselves in a better headspace and now have taken a map off of the Mythos Griffins here. So we'll have to see how it's going to be able to work here on the next couple of maps with the next back being East Verancha, which is another map that can tend to the styles that we saw from both of these teams clock. So we'll have to see which team is going to be able to adapt the best and which one's going to be able to come out on top. Yeah, it's going to be interesting here on uh, Esperanza. Um, I want to issue an apology to Cloud Neon for uh, Jim, for that Junkrat. I was not familiar with your game <laughs> on that hero, and you are making some plays with those Reptires. So keep it up. Yeah, the Junkrat definitely was a pretty good swap here for the side of Jim on that map. Being able to find the Junker Queen twice, engaging in that regicide and getting rid of probably the most impactful target on the side of Mythos Griffiths because Junker Queen has that one-shot potential, has the self-healing, has the shout to keep themselves alive. Like, Junker Queen is just a really powerful hero, and once that Junker Queen is gone, not only have you lost your tank presence, but you've also lost a majority of your engagement tools if you are the side of Mythos Griffiths. So if you're a Mythos Griffiths fan, you have to make sure that Junker Queen is not being eliminated first because once that queen is out the entire like like a country the entire team just fails yeah i will say they did seem to look a little less comfortable on the queen comp compared to the winston comp so i wonder if that played a little bit into the strategy of cloud neon being able to force that junker queen swap and being able to take advantage of that because it definitely seems like mythos was not as comfortable with the junker queen brawl but you know, they were definitely making some good plays still. Like, Mythos are a solid team here, and they've shown that in the first couple of maps of the series. Yeah, definitely. There was some potential in the first couple of maps of the series. They were able to cap on the first point on Blizzard Road with a very interesting brawl comp, and then a very creative dive composition to teleport to the point, then dive up on the enemy supports. And on the first map, they showed the essences of normal compositions and had some good plays. They just weren't able to it together into a point victory. So there has been promises here from Mythos Griffins. The question is, can they clean up on their mistakes that they learned from the first two maps and replicate what they just pulled up on Saravasa here and try to bring us to a map five and potentially a reverse sweep situation here as we're waiting to get into the fourth map of the series, East Barancha. But once we do, it's going to be interesting to see how these two teams are willing to adapt to their styles here and get into the advantage clock. Yeah, we said at the beginning of Saravasa that Cloud Neon needed to come up with something in that map. Not only did they come up with it, but now they have a little bit of momentum on their side. Can they capitalize on it on Esperanza and force a map five? Yeah, there definitely is some momentum after after winning after losing those two maps. You come in and win another map, your first map win since your map since your match victory against Emeralds back on February 18th. That was a few weeks ago, so that has to be a momentum booster. Meanwhile, for the side of Mythos Griffins, that was the first time you lost a map since uh, the last time you lost a series. So it's going to be difficult. They'll have to see if they're able to re bring that momentum back into their favor. As if they're not able to restructure themselves and get themselves ready for the next map, they are looking at the receiving end of a reverse sweep. Uh, as we are receiving messages from the chat, apparently the side of... That is the side of Mythos Griffins are apparently talking about Pokemon at the moment. So that's why we're waiting to get into East Baranja here. So hopefully the agreement has been settled and we'll be able to get into the map here very soon. And hopefully that Pokemon discourse can be saved for another day or maybe another map at the end of the day. What do you mean? Pokemon's more important than Overwatch, right? I mean, who knows at this point? I, I just came off of a match where I just had to cast name, people with Pokemon names. So I'd rather not have to go back into that discourse, regardless of which, as we head here into East Verancia, no swaps from either side. Cloud Neon are sticking with Solaris on this deep, on this support role, while the Mythos Griffin's keeping the same lineup we've seen since the beginning of the match. Yeah, Mythos definitely is comfortable with this five in for this lineup. Cloud Neon, they definitely seemed more comfortable after the support swap i don't know if that's maybe a comms issue or a more comfortable 
just having a more comfortable Moira player. But you know what? It worked for them on Saravasa. Is it going to work for them here on Esperanza? As they are going to come out with a Lucio Moira Winston. And we're going to see the Junkrat. The Junkrat was good on Saravasa. Like, Jim, I will give you all the credit in the world. That was some good Junkrat play on Saravasa. This is a lot harder to play Junkrat on. This is a more open map where you're not going to be fighting in those enclosed rooms like you are on a push map. Yeah, definitely. So we'll see if this Junkrat is going to work here for the side of Cloud Neon. Meanwhile, the Griffins are popping out something we haven't seen all series clock and Echo for the side of Leo Leopard. This is actually not a bad time to come up with this Echo as right now Cloud Neon has no hit scan. So they just have to be make sure that they fly high enough that the Reaper and Moira can't poke at them. So Mythos Griffin's going to be able to take advantage of his Echo, and they already take advantage as I'm speaking that sentence. Chrono is beamed down by that focusing beam, so now there's no speed boost here for the side of Cloud Neon, but they still want to try to engage into this. They still have pretty healthy health pools, minus Chaotic, who's able to jump on the back line, and meanwhile, Jim on the Junkrat is able to get rid of Bronze 76, so now this Echo is the only damage source here for the side of the Mythos Griffins, as Cloud Neon try to take that barricade for their own, but now with Jim out of the picture, courtesy of Ripa, it's still going to be a back and forth affair, but at the the end of the day with mox and dkk gone it's gonna be cloud neon eventually taking this point for their own i'm gonna point out a beautiful play from solaris like right there the echo was poking constantly at that winston but a great job there from solaris to help the winston stay alive and that's what it ended up allowing them to finally win that fight just being able to keep their tank up but dkk now on the diva to try to poke at that echo and winston a little bit more the Diva can also try to protect that Echo in case anybody happens to be shooting at her with those minuscule bullets. Again, no hit scan on the side of Cloud Neon. They also can stop the Junkrat from getting a lot of value as Jim is just constantly shooting bullets into that defense matrix. Here comes that Coalescence from Solaris to try and initiate the push. DKK, very low on health, is spotted out, however, and starts getting rushed upon by the side of Cloud Neon who are starting to pile on top of the background or the back line of the Griffins. All of a sudden, there's Leo Leopard and Mox. Leopard trying to run away for their life eventually just gonna get shocked out here by chaotic meanwhile the bot is not moving at all it's just standing there menacingly waiting for the opportunity to push until cloud neon finally realized hey we have a bot to push yeah neon i think you guys gotta remember the name of this map mode is push you kind of need to uh, i don't know push the bot but a lot of alts here for neon jim with that rip tire i want to see what they end up coming up with this here but the copy here for leopard gives them a second life if they get tired We'll see as Chaotic jumps immediately on DKK and no supports with that Diva means that they're going to be burned down. Jim, however, is traded out here by Leo Leopard and now Bronze is starting to take this bot for hostage as the entirety of Cloud Neon is all the way on the other side of the map. The bot's heading all the way back to the center. Chaotic's going to be jumping on top of Bronze to try and stop that bot in its tracks before it hits the enemy barricade. But still, the advantage starting to go in favor here for the side of the Mythos Griffins. Mox gets the kill on the Solaris and so now Chrono is the only support here for Cloud Neon. And at the end of the day, a little bit of negligence and a little bit of overinvestment gives Mythos Griffins the bot. Yeah, they have the bot here, but Cloud Neon coming back still with both TP assaults plus Primal Rage. Coalescence is going to be coming up here, but Mythos Griffin has the beat to be able to sustain at least through the Death Blossom here. But Bronze has this overclock. Look for Bronze to be on an off angle, poking at the team, seeing what they can find, see if they can find a pick under the back line. You already see DKK trying to pressure out this Winston and stop them as the overclock comes in from Bronze 76, getting pressured out by that Winston of Chaotic, but Jim is going to get the final blow with the concussive mind. Now Neon have a very good opportunity here to try and take this advantage in their own. The beat is invested from Mox, but it doesn't seem to keep everybody up as the, in the moment as the Griffin's still trying to contest, but now with Leo Leopard out of the field, you kind of have to imagine they have to give us a space. Jim, that is the most unfortunate death I've ever seen. Got caught in the corner, dies to the Diva Bomb in the small corridor. Yeah, hate to see it but still cloud neon have the advantage in their favor and are starting to bring the spot back to the neutral as mox is out of the picture and dkk is on the wrong side of the team i'm not gonna lie that was an interesting death there from jim they went into the room to hide not realizing that the diva bomb was there and walked straight into it kind of unfortunate but you know what the rest of cloud neon picks it up and they're chasing these kills um but neon, no one's going for the bot think... again I it's think been you guys, zero days. Uh, it's been zero think... days since Cloud Neon. I forgot about this bot. Eventually, Jim's going to go for it as they're running back from spawn. That's the only reason the bot starts moving. Here's the thing. If they had started moving the bot, they'd already had the forward spawn. They kind of maybe gave themselves a hard time there. 
Yeah, definitely. They will be able to get these four respawns, however, so they do get that advantage, but they kill Leo Leopard as well here. Leo Leopard is going to respawn fast here with a two-second timer, courtesy of that checkpoint, but the Griffins still trying to keep themselves stabilized. They do have this coalescence from Ripa to keep them up for now, but that Rift Tire from Jim finds the kill onto Mox. They trade their life for it as Bronze with the Reaper just walks up and shoots them in the head. Nonetheless, Cloud Neon trying to continue finding these exit kills. The bot is still standing still while all of this madness happens behind them. This is like the this is fine guy it's fire all around them but the bot is just sitting there saying you know this is fine everything's everything's dying around me but i'm just sitting here having the time of my life now chaotic using that primal rage keeping themselves alive and also booping members around but bronze uses that death blossom and gets rid of chrono here and now as the bot starts moving forward now the fight has been brought to the bot and bronze has found two in this fight looking for a third onto this reaper of cruel as dkk is able to get rid of solaris and now the cleanup comes from the griffins and cloud neon are sent back to those forward spawn rooms I'm not gonna lie, Neon has given up so, so much progress by just not pushing the bot. Push the bot. It is called push. They keep they keep going to fight in these small, isolated rooms, and it is working out for them, but at the same time, they're not getting progress. Yeah, they just are not getting progress, and in this case, they're losing progress to the bot here. Ripa's gonna be popping the coalesces, trying to keep themselves alive, but Chaotix is gonna be dump diving right on top of them and getting rid of that Moira. Now with Bronze out of the picture as well, it's not looking good here for the side of Mythos Griffiths, but they did lose their Moira. Here comes the Diva Bomb from B DKK, trying to make the difference. They're barely able to get into that Diva back again, but Mox can't say the same about them. They are for they're killed out here by Gruul, and now with all the picks going red in the kill feed once again, the Mythos Griffiths forced to retreat. Leo Leopard, six health to the name, not gonna be enough to save you from the hands of Gruul. All right, this time, Neon, I want to see you push the bot. That's all. I don't want to see anything else. I just want to see you push the bot. <laughs> they're, do but, they're doing a good job of that now. They're passing your test. <laughs> they're passing the test. I'm excited. I'm happy. <laughs> all right, well, Cloud Neon, starting off the engage here with this Riptide from Jim that finds Bronze in the corridor. So now Echo is the only DPS, and now they switch over to a tank of their own. Now switching over to that duplicate Winston. Death Blossom from Gruul also finds the kill of the Mox, and Ripa's not long for this world either. The bot's not moving, but that's because this time it's contested. Someone from Cloud Neon is on the bot contesting it, as there is DKK right now just trying to kill out the supports, but they're going to be met with a fate of their own as they die to Chaotic, as the bot continues to move here for the side of Cloud Neon. The late death there on the DKK, going to give them an opportunity to push as Leo Leopard is going to switch over to that Tracer. Bronze already has to use Wraith, and they're just going to get chased down, but they are going to live there with the help of that Moira and Kiri. Yeah, Mox going over to this Kiriko. We'll see if it makes a difference here as two and a half minutes left on the time bank. Bronze trying to burn down this Winston of Chaotic, but Chaotic has that Primal Rage to keep themselves alive here. As the bot continues to move here for the side of Cloud Neon, the contest comes in here from DKK. Bronze now has this Death Blossom as well, and Jim's now taken out of the fight. Now Bronze goes in for this Death Blossom, forces out the beat from Chrono as now no kills resulted from that Death Blossom here. The Griffins have to try and engage though now that the support ultimate is out of the field, but they've not been able to find anything else since finding the kill in the gym, but now Solaris taken out of the picture. Gruul with the most unfortunate Reaper teleport. That's two for two, but the DPS have had very unfortunate placements, and at the end of the day, the bot's going to be heading back in the direction of the Griffins. Yeah, Griffins finally stopping the bleeding here. Cloud Neon, though, they were doing a great job there. They're up by almost 80 meters right now. DKK does have the bomb, so they can play a little more aggressive, knowing they have a second life here. The Coalescence here from Ripa going to give him a good opportunity to engage as Leo is going to be lurking in that back line looking for a pulse bomb. Definitely Leo has been good on this tracer before. We'll see if they're able to engage as the coalescence and the bomb are thrown out. DKK with the bunny blaster also gets rid of Jim. Leo's still looking for the pulse bomb advantage, but Cloud Neon are currently on the opposite side. Chaotix eventually going to die here to the signs of bronze, and Mythos Griffins are now continuing to push into the side of Cloud Neon. Uh, meanwhile, they are now pushing the bot themselves. <laughs> after after so many times of Cloud Neon now pushing the bot, Mythos Griffins give up the bot for a little bit, but still they win the fight at the end. Yeah, Jim almost has his rip tire again, and Solaris does have the cold, so they do have options for the engage here, but Mox has that Katsune rush coming, so they're going to have a good engage tool for the side of Mythos Griffins, as they are going to hit the checkpoint and activate those forward spawns. 
Clavion have an opportunity to engage here as they start heading down the main stretch to meet the Mythos Griffins at the bot. You see Gruel coming in for the sideline with that Death Blossom goes straight for the backline, forces out the Suzu and the Defense Matrix from Mox and DKK. But now we're ripped out of the picture. It's only Mox on support. And hey, Jim finds two with the rip tire. Bronze and Mox brought out of the field. The pulse bomb from Leo Leopard is able to get chaotic, but it's still a back and forth affair. Leo! And now it's just the Reaper and the Tracer. And Gruel is going to come out on top alone with those Hellfire shotguns. And start bringing the bot back to the neutral position here for the side of Cloud Neon. I'm not going to lie. As I started seeing Leo just rip off kill after kill there in that fight, I thought that there was going to be a chance that he was going to get that final kill onto Gruel. But Gruel winning the 1v1. They push it back to mid just to clear away the forward spawn as eight seconds left. Cloud Neon have an opportunity here to try and bring us to a map 5 situation. The Mythos Griffins, however, don't expect that Cloud Neon are behind them. And Rip is now taken out of the equation. So Ars is traded though, but Mox is removed. Now Chaotic running with this Primal Rage over to the bot to try and stop Bronze from pushing it forward. Meanwhile, Jim has lost the Tracer to the Leo Leopard, who is trying Mythos to bring this back here on his Tracer. But meanwhile, all of a sudden, the Griffins don't touch the bot in time. And Cloud Neon, after not touching the bot for basically half this match, touched the bot in a crucial moment and bring us to a map number five this is what we wanted to see from cloud neon they struggled at the very beginning but right now they have all the momentum they played fantastic there on esperanza and a great job from them this is the play that i really thought leo was gonna clutch this out like i really thought he was about to clutch that fight but then gruel just finally eliminating the tracer and being able to push that bot back to mid to clear out the forward spawn was actually huge there. And it ended up just being at the end that uh, Mythos kind of forgot about the bot at some point. After after basically an entire map of us saying that Cloud Neon forgot about the bot, it was Mythos Griffins who forgot about a bot in the bot in the most crucial moment. And at the end of the day, they sacrificed that map and bring us to a pivotal map number five here in the series. We're going to be jumping again to another five-minute halftime. But when we return, it is the conclusion of this series between Mythos Griffins and Cloud Neon. Don't go anywhere. You don't want to miss the ending of this match.
read it, let it be known, it still remains true. It has been zero days since Bowsy's casted a tiebreaker map as we are currently two and two in the matchup here between Mythos Griffins and Cloud Neon here in the CGL season 13 NA Diamond Division. Bowsy joined again by Clock as we head to a pivotal map number five here, Clock. Winner takes all, and it's all gonna be decided on our final map, Route 66. Yeah, definitely going to be interesting to see how these two teams play on Route 66. Mythos on the hybrid for the payload stage was actually pretty good. So is Mythos going to have the advantage here on Route 66? Or is Cloud Neon going to take that momentum they've built up over the last two maps and get that reverse sweep and give themselves a chance for the midseason? Definitely, it's going to be one heck of a matchup to see if Cloud Neon can keep this momentum in their favor. If the Griffins have something up their sleeve to deny the reverse sweep in this matchup. But Route 66 is a map that favors Dive Clock. And we've been seeing a lot of dive from one team compared to the other. So we might be able to have an opportunity here for a reverse sweep for the side of Cloud Neon. But definitely going to be an interesting map to see how these two are able to pan it out. Yeah, it's going to be interesting, and I can honestly say for Cloud Neon, I am so sorry I doubted y'all at the very beginning of the series, like after map two. I thought y'all were done for. You proved me wrong. I apologize. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Cloud Neon looked like an entirely different team. Suravasa, very close, but they were making much more clutch plays. They looked more cohesive as a unit. And I think we have to really attribute to that to the swaps they made between maps two and three. They brought Solaris into that support role, a flex player that they have on their, on their roster. And currently the most, let's say the most like, nor like the most experienced player being of course this team being a, a team of college students being the only graduate player on the lineup probably having that experience has helped this team a lot out here clock and definitely is going to pay dividends here as they are continuing to keep solaris in for our final map in this series but we do have a swap on the side of mythos griffins dkk is out and black claw is coming in on that tank roll this is kind of an interesting swap to make a swap on map 5, for somebody who hasn't played yet in this series, is kind of interesting. They're coming in not not really warmed up, so this is going to be interesting. Also, this comp from Neon, um, what the hell am I looking at? I mean, you're looking at a dive with a junk rat. You know, the Australian dive. It's this classic, it's... classic Australian dive composition that works in your competitive lobbies. And also, you doubt Jim's junk rat? The hero it... that you've talked about has been making a lot of clutch plays throughout this entire series? It's more the fact that Chrono has been the one on the Lucio, and now they're playing the flex support with Solaris, who's been playing the more and now playing the Lucio. That's kind of what I was getting more at, is the fact that the support players have swapped roles. Fair enough. That's a uh, that's a very valid claim, but we'll see. Maybe Chrono is a better Curie than Solaris in the long run here, as it's going to be the Mythos Griffins trying to hold up on this high ground, and Chaotic overshoots the top, has to retreat to the team to keep themselves alive here. Going to be waiting for that next dive engage here. Mythos Griffins trying to hold up close, trying to stop this dive from even happening, but you have Jim putting in the damage, forcing out that immortality field early here from Mox, as here comes a dive from Chaotic up to the high ground with Gruul in tow, and now that both supports are dead here for the side of Mythos Griffins. Cloud Neon are in a very good position. They lose Gruul, but it's going to be enough considering Jim has found two in this fight on the drunk ground and Black Claw is succumbing themselves to the edge. Leo gets out with just a sliver of HP and it's amazing they didn't try to chase that stagger because that could have been huge actually. But right now they are pushing a good first fight here. Jim is already 75% of the way to that rip tire. A very stationary poke comp for Mythos gives him an opportunity to be able to farm that tire. Absolutely, and again, that Australian dive working wonders. Jim is just able to dive in with the rest of the team, provides so much damage compared to a Tracer or a Genji or anything of a like. Jim going to be using that tire, and they already find the kill onto Mox. So now Mythos Griffins only have that Zenyatta for heals, and Jim gets the, to gets the total mayhem kill onto Black Claw on the exit. Cloud Neon continuing to steamroll over Mythos Griffins as they take the first point on Route 66. Even when he dies, Jim is still getting kills on this junk rat. <laughs> the Kitsune rush here, though, for Chrono gives them an opportunity to engage on a Mythos Griffin. We do see some swaps, a Bastion and a Diva, to be able to play a lot more damage into that Winston dive here to try to shut down Chaotic. 
It's all going to be on the dives coming out here from Cloud Neon. It's going to be very difficult for Chaotic to stay alive. Forced to pop the Primal Rage already and already burned oh, down 300 HP from when they started. Still falling, by the way. Down to half health on that Winston in that Primal Rage farm. Jim eventually dies to Black Claw here. So the Mythos Griffin is able to get one of the major damage dealers out of the picture. But they're forced to use this Transcendence early from Ripa to keep themselves alive. And Black Claw loses the mech in the process. So now Cloud Neon have an opportunity to re-engage. But they are backing up waiting for Jim to come back. Yeah, they do have to. They do have to try to back up here. This is gonna be difficult for Chaotic. That Zen Bash and Reaper. If you are a Winston, that is the stuff of nightmares. You see that, and you're like realizing it could be instant death as Jim is dead as he tried to mine in. Yeah, Bronze able to get that kill. Also gets the killer into Chaotic. Sol Solaris is using the beat into this fight, however, but still all the kills are blue in the kill feed. At the end of the day, Cloud Neon try to engage, but it doesn't work out to their favor. Gruul is able to get rid of Bronze 76, but not for their life. As I say that, Chrono is able to keep them alive, so maybe a good exit kill here for Cloud Neon. Yeah, that's big to be able to get that Bastion out of there. They're going to have an opportunity to engage here before that Bastion gets back. And they gotta take advantage of this. They gotta go in before that high damage gets back. But Chaotic is low already. Yeah, Gruul gonna be using this blade to try and slice and dice anybody in sight, but Chaotic's brought out of the equation. They do trade it for Mox, however, but Ripa's found two in this fight on the Zenyatta. Meanwhile, that configuration artillery doesn't find the kills, but Bronze is able to get Chrono at the end of the engage, and the Mythos Griffins continue their hold here on the second point of Route 66, as Cloud and Neon need to try and change something up here to try and get any sort of card progress anymore. Yeah, the swats from Mythos Griffin are definitely working out. This extra pressure from the Bastion Diva is just not allowing Chaotic to be able to do whatever he wanted, like he was able to do on the first point, and they're having a hard time. They need to find a good use of this Kitsune Rush. They've been holding onto it for a long time. Jim also has this rip tire online, so we'll see if the Junkrat is able to make the difference here. Gruel going up to the high ground. The bomb comes out here from Black Claw, as does the Death Blossom that catches onto Chrono. So now Cloud Neon will have to wait to use that Kitsuna Rush for another day. Jim sees that Leopard coming into the back line behind them and is able to get that exit kill. Chaotic sacrificed their life, however, courtesy of his amplification matrix from Mox, who does not have the tire on or does not have the immortality field online. Rip is gonna be able to get rid of that rip tire as well here. And now with Gruel out of the picture, you have to imagine the Mythos Griffins are going to continue holding. Jim gets that exit kill on the Ripa, however, so there is opportunity for Cloud Neon to fast to quick to quickly engage. Yeah, if they're going to go here, they got to go without Jim. They are still holding on to the uh, Kasune Rush. They've had that now for about four fights. It might be time to uh, just kind of invite invest it. I don't feel like they've had really seen an opportunity to do it, but if they can use that Kasune Rush prefer towards the Zenyatta, they might be able to force out Transcendence here. Chrono on the high ground now. We'll see if this is how they want to try to engage this Kitsune Rush. But right now, they're focused on trying to keep Chaotic alive here. As the Kitsune Rush still not pop, finally just pop. But Jim is killed out before they're even able to take the benefits of it. As now, here comes the push here from the side of Cloud Neon. They force out the Transcendence. And Mox is caught off in a bad angle. Gets killed out here by Gruul. As now, the dives are coming in here from the side of Cloud Neon. The Zenyatta of Ripa, not long for this world. Chaotic does get killed out. But still, the Cloud Neon squad trying to bring themselves back into this. But now, Claw has found two. Black Claw has found two in this fight. Bronze gets killed out here by Gruul, and now the Diva still alive here for the side of Mythos Griffins, not able to get the Diva Bomb online, but Leo Leopard back on the Tracer, starting to shred the members of Cloud Neon, and now it's just a back and forth affair. Solaris able to get the trade here onto Black Claw, sacrificing their life force to the hands of Mox, but still, it's just Chaotix and Jim on the point right now. Jim trying to dive in with the rest of the support line, trying to get these crucial kills as the Configuration Artillery is launched. The Primal Rage also invested here from Chaotix, as is the Pulse Bomb from Leo Leopard that doesn't find anything, and now with both supports dead here for the side of Memphis Griffins, Cloud Neon have to start pushing this card or else this entire progress is going to go to waste. Yeah, they're pushing it, but the Bastion's still setting up on the high, gr high ground as everybody's just going to fall one by one, and they are going to get an opportunity to cap second. The bomb kind of being wasted. Yeah, Black Claw going to be using that self-destruct to get their mech back, trying to get the trying to get the remech kill, but won't be able to. They'll sacrifice their mech once more, get killed out here by Chaotic, but it does give enough time for Mox to get back into the fight, but they're forced back into that room to try and keep themselves alive. They won't be able to, however, as Chaotic is there to stop them. Leo Leopard is on the cart on the tracer, trying to stall it out. His overtime is now triggered before the cart enters into the deadlock gang, but Gruul and, Jink and Jim are going to combine for a beautiful kill on that tracer, and now the cart sails into the deadlock game to start the final stage of Dorado. Or Route 66, not Dorado, I'm sorry. I was going to say, when did we switch to Dorado? I was a little confused for a second there. Uh, oh, the tire. 
Okay, Jim finds two on the rip tire before the cart is even moving. By the way, the cart is not moving. I'm having deja vu to Esperanza. Nonetheless, that's a good start here for Clown Neon to get that cart moving through the through the deadlock gang. Yeah, the Farah here for Leo. This could be kind of interesting. They might be able to get some good value out of it because there really isn't anything to really poke at them. Yeah, you also can get those very good boots with that concussive blast to keep Chaotic away from their team here. As now Cloud Neon are forced to retreat here with only 45 seconds on the clock. They have to come up with something here to continue pushing this cart through the deadlocking and try to cap it onto point C. Yeah, as they're going to try to cap on a point C, they got to be careful on the engage here. As Mox does have that window to be able to put some extra pressure, extra pressure on their attack. But Cloud Neon having the blade here for Gruel, he needs to come up big with this. Here comes that play from Gruel, looking for the slice and dice onto Leo Leopard on the far, but the far is just flying a little bit too high for Gruel to be able to reach. The blade is not long enough, needs an extension on that to really reach those high distances. Now the amplification matrix from Mox, thrown right in the middle of the field, so Mythos Griffins have a great opportunity to try and poke out the members of Cloud Neon, but they're still pushing the card. The Katsuna Rush from Chrono is burnt out as well, as now overtime is going to be triggered. Chaotic playing the Diva, meanwhile, trying to keep the team alive and continue pushing this card forward. Black Claw is going to invest the Diva a bomb it has to be big in order to seal the deal here but now chaotic goes a little bit too far and gets burned out of their diva mech the rest of the team however alive solars has the beat as well to keep everybody stabilized through that bastion of bronze here comes the bronze from leopard it is completely shut out by gruel the rip tire coming in here from jim gets rid of mox as well all the kills are going blue in the kill feed bronze is the only person who's come up with a kill but that configuration artillery is going to be completely denied as well both dpl cells from mythos griffin finding absolutely nothing as cloud neon continue pushing his card toward that final objective. Leo Leopard comes in for the contest on the Tracer, but it's not going to be for long as they're continually getting pushed out. Mox on the Kiriko, trying to keep them alive and rip on this Ana, trying to continue the stall, but it's not going to be for any sort of duration as Cloud Neon sail the cart into the final point of Route 66 with no time left in the bank. What a scrappy fight there at the end. Both teams kind of were trading back and forth. Cloud Neon Ended up getting the better of the picks towards the end and being able to push it in, and that's massive for them. Being able to complete Route 66, which is definitely a tough map to actually finish, if you play it right, that's big for Cloud Neon. They have an opportunity here, as long as they just don't let them push towards the end, this map, map can be over here early. On the side of Mythos Griffins, they know what they have to do. They know that they have to complete this map in order to keep their chances of winning this series alive. It doesn't matter how much time they have left in the bank. Mythos Griffins have to get to the end of the map here in order to initiate those overtime rounds. As Cloud Neon coming out on the defense, continuing to run this sort of dive brawl style hybrid that we've been seeing here, Clock, with the Reaper Junkrat. Actually, the Reaper now no longer the Genji here coming out from Gruul. So we'll see if this composition is going to work here on the defense and how, how the team is going to try to adapt to what Mythos Griffins are currently running, which is a hybrid of their own with a Cassidy, Farah, Reinhardt composition. I'm going to be very shocked if Mythos Griffins actually comes out on this. If they do, more power to them. It's going to be kind of rough, but I like the Farah pick because they realize that, like, Cloud Neon has not ran any hit scan. They have mostly two flex DPS players. So this is going to be interesting as they actually do come out on this. Okay, this is, uh, this is something out of hell. I can't describe it any other way. This is something out of your ranked games, as is what you're trying to say here, as Mythos Griffins trying to get Not this mine. comp into their favor here, as they're trying to, as Cloud Neon are trying to dive into the back line, but when you're playing a brawl composition like the Mythos Griffins are, it's kind of difficult to do that. They are able to get rid of Ripa and Brawn 76, but not for the cost of both of their DPS, so now that Winston is the highest DPS potential that the Cloud Neon team has. Meanwhile, the cart is still moving. Chaotic jumping into the spawn doors, trying to get rid of the far as the cart is moving behind them with Black Claw moving it forward on this Reinhardt as the, on their own. Eventually starting to get tased out here by Chaotic, but at the end of the day, it looks like it's going to be Mythos Griffins continuing this pressure. Now that Leo Leopard has found both supports. Yeah, this is going to be an easy cleanup here for Mythos Griffin as they're just going to get some of these late kills. Are they going to get Jim late? It looks like it, and yes, yes. they do. Yep, and Gruul also dies late as well, so there's only going to be one more fight here for the side of Cloud Neon to try and hold this cart outside of that first gate, but looks like this weird comp from Mythos Griffins, what do you know, you counter unorthodox with unorthodox. Yeah, as we see, Jim is going to switch off of the Junkrat and go to the Soldier to try to contest this Farah. 
So we'll see if the Soldier 76 is able to do the job here. As it looks like Cloud Neon are actually going to give up this point. Nope, they're starting to run in now. As I say that, Chrono is going to be the first one to touch the objective. Jim is able to get rid of Leo Leopard, but the rest of their team is not at the point currently. They're all the way back in spawn trying to switch on to different heroes. And the first point is going to be capped here by Mythos Griffins with ease. Yeah, they were trying... They were trying to switch comps, they just didn't do it in time, and they weren't able to get a very good fight there, as Chaotic now has to get out to avoid losing that mech. Yeah, Chaotix trying to get out of the fight, will be able to retreat successfully here, as now the cart sails into the second phase here of Route 66, and this is where the Griffins were able to hold Cloudion very strongly clocked, so Cloudion have to return the favor if they're going to burn down this time bank. Yeah, we see Chrono switching over to the Baptiste. Maybe something to be able to help out Jim a little bit with poking at that Farah. And it does give them a little bit more of an option of the Bat Pass his self heal with that regenerative burst. So this could be interesting to see how they do it. It gives Bap an opportunity to be a little more survivable and play a little more on his own. Yeah, but it's going to be difficult to try and keep your team alive when Chaotic is charged out by Blackclaw into the back line. Coalesces from Ripa also engaged to burn down that Diva into bits. Cloudion now down their tank, trying to stabilize, but Jim's out of the picture. And the Earth Shatter from Blackclaw lands onto Solaris' Coalescence, canceling that ultimate in the midst of the battle. And now Cloudion looking worse for wear as the Griffins have stabilized and found themselves in an advantage. Bronze is dead late, though, here, so that actually is pretty big for Cloud Neon to be able to not have that Reaper pressure, but they're not going to get a touch here. Yes, they are. They, they just made me get eat my words. Chaotic able to get the touch there late as the beat is forced out here from Mox to counter that death boss of a Gruul, and Gruul just gets charged out by Black Claw. Leo Leopard uses the barrage, but it's completely eaten up by Chaotix, but still the kills are blue in the kill feed. Black Claw able to get rid of Jim as now Chaotic trying to battle for their life on this diva, but it's going to not be long for this world as the rest of Cloudion falling one by one. And now the card sails into the deadlock gang with four and a half minutes left on the time bank for Mythos Griffins to get to the end of the map. I think Mythos Griffin finally realized, hey, they have momentum, we need to come up with something, or they are going to take this series. After letting Cloud Neon have some hope and the momentum right now, Mythos Griffin is just steamrolling their way. They still have four minutes to be able to cap this third point. Yeah, definitely, and it seems like Cloud Neon just have a damage problem right now, which, I mean, it makes sense. If you look at the stats from the last round, Jim had the most damage at 11,000. The closest after that, 5,800. Here comes the deep bump from Chaotic, trying to equalize the score. Cloud Neon, however, are able to survive it. Bronze goes in with a Death Blossom and eliminates Jim early here. Black Claw also charges Solaris into next week, continuing to find picks on this Reinhardt that you typically wouldn't expect from a Reinhardt player, as now Cloud Neon stuck in a terrible position here with basically no answers as the card is sailing into that final point yeah the earth shatter here for mythos griffin there is nothing to block it this is oh. going to be free if they walk out they're going to get put on their backs yeah, Gruul tries to come out on the Tracer, but is immediately eviscerated from the conversation. Jim on the Soldier 76 next to touch. Once again, brought out of the equation. Leo Leopard is cleaning up this point one by one. Chaotix comes in on the Wrecking Ball, but they're once again charged up by Black Claw as the card closes in on that Golden Box of Victory. There have been no kills right in the kill feed, and the Mythos Griffin's just cleaning up the entire field. They'll cap the point with three minutes and three seconds left on the time bank, giving them four minutes to work with compared to Cloud Neon's one. Okay, for Mythos Griffin, they now have more time than they originally started with. They now have more time for overtime than they originally started their first push with. It is only three seconds, but still, that is more time than what they started with. So, Mythos That's Griffin's... Pretty That's pretty impressive still. 100% impressive as Mythos Griffin's... <laughs> now put themselves in a very good position, and Cloud Neon started a final, starting to seem to fall from grace. They need to come up with an answer here in order to find the advantage in their favor once again. And I mean, you can't deny it at this point, Clock. The inevitable is Jim on the Junkrat, as they're going to be going back to that hero that, again, they were able to out-damage everybody else on their roster with in the first round of this map. Yeah, what is interesting here is we are going to see Mox actually go to the mercy so we're gonna have some pharmacy going on here and this might be an issue for cloud neon they have shown that they're kind of struggling to be able to run that hit scan against a farah that didn't have a mercy pocket and coming out on the genji junkrat with only a minute left it's going to be very difficult to contest this farah and with a minute you do not have time to make mistakes no time at all as cloud neon 
Going to be pushing out here with this Diva instead. Chaotic one is trying to counter the Farah in some capacity here. We'll see if the Mythos Griffins are able to make this Farmer Seek work in their favor here. It is one less support that you have to keep on the rest of your team. So hopefully the Cloud Neon can realize this potential and try to get rid of Ripa fast. But, Le but meanwhile, Leo Leopard is just pumping in the damage from the high ground. Trying to pump in the damage into Cloud Neon and get rid of any sort of important targets before the fight even begins. Cloud Card is able to surge through this first real area which is these girders and black claw dropped extremely low charges a little bit too far forward and gets killed out by chrono so now the mythos griffins have no tank pressure on their side meaning cloud neon can continue to push this cart yeah with the reinhardt heart down cloud neon does have a tank advantage leo leopard is getting a lot of damage from those far rockets though already 60 percent to the barrage but with chaotic on that diva there's a good chance that's going to be neutralized when it does come up Card continues to move here. Mythos Griffins holding on top of Big Earls, and it is Black Claw on the cart trying to stop. It is now over time, starting to count down here. Cloud Neon need to try to keep this in their control, but here comes that barrage from Leo Leopard on high, and it burns Chrono to bits, and Solaris is also removed from the equation. Cloud Neon falling one by one as the Diva Mech is removed here from Chaotix. The only person left here to make some heroics is Jim on this Junkrat as Chaotix is one health to the name, but they'll eventually die, as will Jim, as all the picks are blue in the kill feed and the Mythos Griffins stopped that cart at 75 meters here for the side of Cloud Neon. And now a goal has been set inside for Mythos Griffins to take the victory and deny the reverse sweep. Mythos Griffins knew exactly what they needed to do there. They held on first point, and now they'll have four minutes and three seconds to only push almost to the end of first point. This is not looking good for Cloud Neon. They do still have a chance to pull this back, but they have to play this to absolute perfection because any mistake that Mythos Griffin can punish them for is just going to end up with a Mythos Griffin's win. And definitely, and we remember the first time we had we saw Mythos Griffins on the attack, the first point was not clean clock. Cloud Neon were not able to get any sort of hold for their own. They pushed up a little bit too far forward and cost their life for it. So we'll have to see if these swaps are going to be the difference maker. As for the first time, we're seeing Chaotic pull out the Sigma, I believe, here for the side of Cloud Neon. And Jim is on the ash. No more Junkrat in the equation. Yeah, this Bap Zen Sig double hit scan, they are really looking to just pump out damage. And this Bap Zen comp can pump in a lot of damage into that Reinhardt and get a good amount of pressure. Whereas this double hit scan with a Discord or on Leo could force Leo to back off from this Farah pretty quickly. They just have to make sure they're aware of where Leo is. They don't have a secondary high pick potential with Bronze on the Reaper. They have a lot of frontline pressure, but compared to Bronze on the Soldier, they don't have just the random pick potential. It's all going to be on how Cloud Neon are able to contest that cart as it moves through Route 66. They're giving up a lot of territory here, going all the way back to Big Earls. Leo Leopard rounds the corner, notices the double hit scan, and immediately retreats as they're just trying to take this high ground advantage for their own. As the Mythos Griffin's cart starting to move toward that girders and make it past that first real hurdle as they continue trying to find the advantage. But right now, Cloud Neon are just trying to poke from this high ground. But so far, it's only been blood. No casualties so far as about 30 seconds wiped off the clock here. And that cart continues to make steady progress toward the golden box of victory. Cloud Neon trying to continue pushing here as Jim trying to find that dynamite does land on a lot of targets but you see the rush coming in from Mythos Griffiths and Solaris is brought out of the equation immediately. Cloud Neon now down that discord arm trying to keep themselves alive here with the damage but Gruul is also gone. Mythos Griffins now finding the advantage they need. Leo Leopard is taken out of the engaged but the card still needs to be contested by somebody. It has to be chaotic to lay it up to the point as now, as now Jim and Chrono are out of the equation and Cloud Neon unfortunately couldn't sail as high as they wanted. The Mythos Griffins regain their wins and take the victory denying the reverse sweep great job there from mythos griffins to be able to seal it up at the end cloud neon you know you started down 2-0 you weren't able to fi finish off the reverse sweep but you know what gotta give it to you guys you showed a lot of heart and that is very commendable from this series jim had some great moments on the junk rat the sports had some plays of their own for the side of cloud neon but in the end mythos griffins just able to steamroll their way through their first attack on Route 66, finishing with that massive time bank difference, being able to hold there on the first point, and just having so much time to be able to push through that first checkpoint just to take the series. 
100%. Definitely a really good effort there from the side of the Mythos Griffins coming back into that. But Cloud Neon still a recovery effort for the ages. Two maps that were pretty were pretty close for the most part. They were able to take those victories and bring us to that map five in the first place where the potential was there for the reverse sweep. But Mythos Griffins made the adjustments necessary after losing those two maps, got the mental back in their favor, and were able to take the victory for their own here, Clock. And that puts Mythos Griffins in a very good position for the midseason tournament. But now now, Cloud Neon, if they want to get that midseason tournament, their hopes are in the uh, their hopes are in the hands of somebody else at this rate, or their hopes are completely denied entirely. Still, two map victories is something to behold, and that means even if they don't make the midseason tournament, Cloud Neon have an opportunity to make a comeback through the second half of this season. Yeah, even if they don't make the midseason tournament, that's time to get in scrims and be able to see, you know, what can they do that's going to make their second half of the season better obviously you would like to be playing in the midseason but if it's not in the cards for you you get the advantage that other people have don't have where you're able to practice during that time and just work on what you need to work on to have a good second half yeah, definitely. So we'll have to see how these two teams are able to go about if we'll be seeing Cloud Neon in the midseason tournament and how Mythos Griffins are able to do in that midseason tournament coming up in just less, basically less than 48 hours clock. That midseason tournament is going to begin and everything is going to go pretty, everything's going to be going here in the CGL tournament, going for the absolute best to see who is the best at the midway point of season 13 in every single one of our divisions. But that's going to do it for our broadcast. What an amazing match. And you know, and you know, Clock, even though it was not a reverse sweep, it still was a very enticing match to see both of these teams face off against one another. Yeah, it definitely was. Neon, you definitely did good towards the end. You started out weak. You made the adjustments at halftime, which I said you needed to do. And I applaud you for your effort to be able to even bring this series back as close as you did. Griffins, great job. You started strong. You almost collapsed, but you were able to bring it back in map five. So great job by both teams. Yeah, definitely. It shows the sort of versatility and the endurance of both of these teams to come back when it matters the most. But that's going to do it for us here today. For my wonderful co-caster, Clock, our amazing producer, Headrammer, and our observers, Beamgarden and Megalas, who worked tirelessly to make this wonderful production happen here today. My name has been Bowsy. Until we meet again, we hope you have an amazing night.